Today we're going to see blind skiers, amputees, and spinal cord injuries all together out on the mountain. We'll get into how they manage to compete against one another head up a little bit later in the program. But Bob, right now, high expectations and a lot of anticipation with these skiers as Nagano approaches. Well, there's still a lot of pressure here at Winter Park, Tony, at the National Sports Center for the Disabled, where they're holding the 11th Columbia Crest Cup, which is the final tune-up before the team leaves for Nagano. Now the first skier we'll introduce you to is from OMAC, Washington, Teresa Francher, sitting in behind her guy, J.P. Wolfenson from New Zealand. Now, Teresa's in great form, winning double gold at the World Cup 98 just one week ago in Breckenridge. She's a B2 blind athlete. She has some light perception in her right eye, which means that her guide must supply the focus she needs. I, like when we come in a Super G, a downhill, or a GS, they have a delay or a corridor, and that's just one one gate where you're just sitting on your edge the whole way around. Um, as I initiate that turn, I'm shouting in delay the whole way through the turn, so Teresa gets a feel for how long that turn is. And in slalom, um, if you've got a hairpin or a flush, I call in short and short because it's a quicker a turn and it uh, takes you out of the rhythm of the course as well. We're trying to get a radio system set up. We just haven't found the perfect system for us yet. JP's loud enough so I can hear him pretty much the whole way down on most courses. So I got lucky there. <laughs> Our second tandem is a couple of Kiwis, Sue Walker and her fiance guy, Dave Gardner. They've got their own approach. Tell me about the system you guys are using. Um, I've got an um, amplifier uh, speaker on my back. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. It hooks up to a microphone and a helmet, and I ski in front and I shout out what's happening with the, <laughs> the terrain and the turns and just basically what's happening. So when we first started racing, um, Dave used, just used to shout. He didn't have the speaker, and it was very hard to hear. Um, especially with a lot of the, yeah, faster, and, and especially with the noise from the snow and just other wind and, and things like that. So it's actually, it's working very well. It's really reliable. It doesn't break down. So. Do a lot of blind skiers use it? You guys do? Yeah, they do. And, um, a lot of the Europeans do. Not, not the Americans, but the Europeans do. What, what do the Americans do? They yell? Um, seem to be using a lot of two-way radios, oh. which we have yeah. tried, but... Um, they, they aren't very reliable at all, and one minute they're working, and the next minute they're not. And Plus, uh, they don't have a direction. This is a direction to follow. Yeah. So. And the sound's not actually right in your ear. It's coming from the you know, where Dave is, and that is really important. Recently named New Zealand Paralympic ski team coach Kevin Jardine has been with the National Sports Centre for the Disabled for three years. He likes Sue and Dave's chances in Nagano. They've increased their speed probably three or four times what they were skiing a couple of years ago and uh, really starting to fly down the mountain. So you like their chances? Oh, I, I think they've got really good chances. Um, they're, they're, uh, we've concentrated on speed events, downhill and Super G, a little more this year than we have in the past. Gone to more races than we're used to going to. And um, we, uh, we're doing quite well. Both couples will be doing all four disciplines in Nagano, the downhill of the Super G, the giant slalom and the slalom. While Teresa and JP won two gold medals at the recent World Cup, Sue and Dave only took home one. But most blind athletes will tell you, and I am shocked here, they'd rather not have barriers in their path. I enjoy the speed events. Um, that's my favorite, and I think that we can do well there. I also like GS. Slalom's not my favorite event, but I just try to get through it and do the best I can. Um, it's, slalom is really difficult for blind skiers because it just it seems like a bunch of invisible sticks that you have to turn around really quickly in order to make, make it through. Teresa and JP have only been together for about four months, but think of the faith you'd have to have in your partner. Imagine going downhill, freeway speeds with your eyes closed.